A lot of people ask me how you spray a mask with a flag design. So this was the designs that we came up with for the 2012 Olympics uh, to add a bit of sort of um, national identity to the uniforms of the fences. So it's, it's actually a very simple process, but it is quite time consuming. What you're gonna need is some uh, silver gaffer tape. This is some cloth uh, uh, tape, which is, um, it's kind of standard, you can pick up at most hardware stores, you can tear it with your hand or you can cut it with a pair of scissors. So in effect, if we were doing a French design, uh, but most of the designs are pretty similar, um, you start off by masking the, uh, all of the parts that you don't want to spray. So on a French mask, we're just going to spray the tricolor on the front of the mask. So all of the edging will be needed to be masked. So now the edge has been masked, what you might want to do, depending on the type of mask, is cover up any of the inside parts that might spray through the mesh and then uh, paint or damage the inside of the mask. So uh, you, again, using more tape, cover up any of the internal parts. Now for the French design, the center of the mask is going to remain plain or the initial color of the saber. So if it was a white mask, you'd be obviously leaving the white and masking off this. If you had a red mask, etc., you'd need to spray white. So with a saber mask, it's slightly different. The base color is going to remain silver. So again, we take some of the silver tape and then we are simply placing that down the center of the mask. Now this is a bit tricky and this is just to give us the basic outline. We're then going to use the more accurate tape to give a, a better finish so that it's nice and straight. Um, so straighten that across, stick it down. And now we've got the the, the largest area covered and we'll use some of the basic cloth tape now this cloth tape it's more stretchy so you can sort of um, bend it and move it to the right section easier than the silver tape to make sure that, that you end up with a nice neat straight line it also sticks um, better into the gaps of the mesh so you end up with a, a cleaner spray. So that's one side now done. And I'm literally just picking a, a line in the mesh and following along the line. And that way that I know it's gonna, gonna be straight and it's gonna look good from straight on. So that's the front of the mask all masked. So now we're about to spray, spray the first blue section of the mask. So obviously we don't want to get any blue on the red section. So we just apply a bit of tape that's just loosely put on just to mask that last section so we don't get any overspray. And now we're ready to go and spray the mask. So for Sabre, we're trying to coat the edges of the mesh and then we're going to use just a bit of cloth uh, to wipe down the excess paint on the front of the mask, which will mean that it will still remain conductive. If you weren't painting a Sabre mask, you would just spray it and you'd probably give more coats because obviously it doesn't need to be conductive. So this is a, a, a blue car paint. Um, car paints work perfectly well. We use a special type of paint that bonds slightly better, but it will work with standard spray paint. So just check your color. And then I'm just going to try and fill in some of the edges to make sure that it looks as good as possible. 
And now we're just going to use a bit of cloth and we're just going to rub down just across the front of the mask. And if you look really closely, you can just see that that's just leaving some of the silver, just removing some of the silver, uh, sorry, some of the blue off and leaving the silver metal underneath. And so that will obviously remain conductive and pass the uh, tests required. So now finally, once it's dried, the longer you leave it to dry, obviously the more secure the paint will be. Then you can remove the masking tape and now you can see that you're starting to get the basis of one of the uh, flag masks.